Thank you very much, uh, Director General, for, for giving me this opportunity. Actually, as you all have seen in the program, I'm the understudy of Mr. B. Malgosh, who couldn't be here. But of course, uh, I couldn't resist to take this opportunity uh, to uh, speak a bit about the discussions on this important topic um, that we held during the Swedish chairmanship of the Global Forum on Migration and, and Development. Uh, as you know, uh, for over a decade, Sweden has been committed to and actively engaged in strengthening the global effects of uh, efforts on migration and development. And we've been looking to find ways of strengthening this global cooperation in a meaningful full way. Uh, Glo the Global Forum on Migration and, and uh, uh, Development was such a way of advancing this uh, constructive global debate. And when we took the, the chair of the Global Forum, a natural next step for the forum <coughs> in its development was to put a stronger development focus uh, on the discussions in this forum. And that became a natural starting point for our program. Uh, this was uh, true, of course, in terms of the thematic focus of the work, but also for our efforts to engage more development actors in the debate on migration and development. The theme that we chose for our uh, period as the chairmanship was unlocking the potential of migration for inclusive development. The idea being that the development effects of migration <coughs> were not automatic automatic, uh, but that good policy and strong partnerships were needed to unlock uh, effects. So we put strong emphasis on the substantive discussions, trying to advance the agenda, but also we try to strengthen the building of the evidence base, for example, the so-called platform the partnership and the policy and practice database. These platforms seek to showcase migration and development practices and policies uh, that have come out of the discussions and the debates in the global forum. We have found it very important to gather the evidence uh, for the enabling effects that migration has for development, not least as this migration and development perspective is a rather new one and also largely unknown. The more specific issue of the inclusion of migration in the post-2015 development agenda became a key priority during the Swedish chairmanship. That was, of course, a question of timing and lucky coincidence. The preparations for the second high-level dialogue was underway as we took the chairmanship, and <coughs> so were also the preparations for the new UN development agenda. Many actors valid around the idea that this time around we should not miss the opportunity to include migration into the UN development goal. So at the high level dialogue last year, a strong and clear message was also given by more than 50 countries that expressed this, a very strong call for the inclusion of migration on the post-2015 agenda. So did many international organizations, as well as global civil, civil society. At the Global Four meeting in Stockholm in May uh, this year, which was attended by more eight than 800 delegates from 140 countries, 30 international organizations and civil society also resulted in a very strong call for the inclusion of migration into the post 2015 development agenda. So why is this inclusion very important? I think that the previous speakers, and especially Mr. Gerber, has already outlined why this is very important. And I would instead just like to say a few words on what were the results of 
les conséquences de la réunion de ce forum mondial de mai et les messages et les recommandations qui ont découlé de notre réunion. La réunion du forum mondial de Stockholm a dit que la migration était principalement un protection de leurs humains et la protection de leurs besoins en tant qu'être humain et qu'il fallait intégrer ceci dans le programme de développement après 2015. Il y avait aussi un consensus fort ferme en disant que les migrants et la migration devaient être reconnus comme des moteurs de développement. Pour ce qui est des recommandations concrètes ont été formulées, tout d'abord, les migrations et la migration doivent être incluses dans la nouvelle agenda. Le texte Second, du nouveau that migration and mobility be clustered la, uh, and included within the means of implementation. Dans les moyens de mise en œuvre. Third, that they be included as targets under a number of relevant sustainable development goals. And fourthly, de développement durable. Et that the targets and indicators are indicateurs disaggregated sont to account for the development outcomes of migrants and their families. Pour être au bénéfice des a number of targets were suggested, including the protection of human rights of migrants and preventing labor exploitation, discrimination, and reducing the cost of recruitment and remittances and enhancing financial inclusion of migrants and enhancing access to and portability of social security benefits, as well as facilitating mobility and the portability of pensions and, sorry, and skills. The recommendation from the forum meeting were communicated to the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and to the Open Working Group, and as we've heard, they might have influenced the outcome a, a, a bit, I'm, I hope. That's the case. Um, these, these recommendations might sound like a mod modest result, uh, but I think that the, the, they have a, a large degree of importance as the entire global forum community. Uh, oh, including the global civil society, stand behind it. And I'm also happy to draw your attention to that in Stockholm, in connection with the Global Forum meeting, the civil society organizations adopted what they call the Civil Society Stockholm Agenda, calling for the inclusion of migration to the post-2015 development agenda. And this uh, agenda has now been signed by more than 250 uh, civil society organizations uh, around the globe. Now, as the deliberations on the post-2015 agenda con continues, the Global Forum will need to continue engaging with this process. And Sweden is very grateful to our Turkish colleagues who have taken over the Global Forum uh, chair after us, that they have expressed a strong commitment to further these efforts within the Global Forum process. And <coughs> I'm happy to announce that there will be a thematic meeting in the Global Forum process on this precise topic to be held uh, on the 5th of February in Geneva. Uh, uh, after Christmas, that is, of course. We must be pragmatic. Without active intervention, migration will maybe not figure in the new development uh, agenda and in the new goals. And we will spend another decade trying to work around the fact that we didn't get onto the agenda. I think that we all need to continue our efforts as we enter into the negotiations of this next year. And I'm very happy to hear about IOM's uh, accountability and advo advocacy activities that are planned. I very much welcome the strong focus that you are putting on uh, working uh, in this way uh, and uh, in partnership uh, with, with others. So, to, to conclude, why is it so important uh, uh, to advance this, this, this agenda? Uh, I think that we all have different answers to, to this question. Uh, to me, it's about coherence 
and momentum uh, and also to be able to showcase the positive effects of migration in, uh, in the narrative. It has been said by many others before me, but I think that this is extremely important. By having migration on in the post-2015 development agenda, that will help us to strengthen multilateral cooperation and international organizations are encouraged to consider the development aspects also in their work and the relevance of migration. All relevant UN agencies and the IOM as the lead migration agency should have migration and development firmly placed on their agendas. And strengthened co coherence and cooperation within the global migration group should be encouraged not only in New York in, in Geneva by including migration in the development agenda, but also in the field, and I think that is not least important. I think that migration and mobility is one of today's most important issues, and it's increasingly important in a globalized and interconnected ways. It requires now, it requires that we work with innovation, we, have, we need to collaborate, and we need to keep dialogue open to really advance and reach out for these opportunities that are, are uh, there for us. I believe that this is an effective way and can encourage governments and other actors, especially the development actors, to analyze, plan for and act upon, and also monitor the opportunities and challenges that migration brings to development. In essence, it's about more coherence and effective policy, more cooperation and constructive dialogue. And if I may quote Mrs. Rasha Michel uh, from earlier today, there should be no lack of courage in the endeavors that we undertake. Thank you very much.